Um, how come that you felt the need to coin a new term, composite-oriented programming? It's, uh, it's a very good question. It's really one of the most fundamental questions because that's sort of the reason why we exist in the first place, the answer to that. And the reason is that while designing various systems over the years and while being in various design discussions, I come to realize that orbit-oriented programming is really nice. The problem mm -hmm. is that no one is doing it. Everyone is doing class-oriented programming because that's what our programming language allows us to do. We, we write classes, we don't write objects. So the central construct of the, the language... The central construct is classes, is not classes, objects. Classes, huh? Exactly. Um, and that has, that has then evolved into uh, aspect-oriented programming, where we are more talking about different roles of objects, but we're still basing it on a class foundation. So what we wanted to do was to really take this to the next level and say that objects are very important, but we call them composites. But we don't have any classes. We implement classes by composing small pieces together. And aspect oriented programming was a great step in that direction by introducing the notion of aspects. We just took it one step further and removed the class that, that the aspects were added to and say that all functionality is based on aspects or fragments as we call them. But so you actually... Uh, it's the, just a logical step. The composite is that you composite the object out of the different fragments. Exactly. And, and the, the key point is that each fragment uh, deals with a specific role. It de deals with a specific concern in the object. So instead of having one big class that tries to do everything, you have small pieces that are really, really focused on one thing in particular. So that's the what you've got from aspect-oriented programming, exactly. the reuse, exactly. potential reusability of the fragments. Exactly. And, and the way you had typically dealt with this using orbit-oriented programming is to use the, the composite design pattern, which mm -hmm. is a way to get around this uh, using just objects and classes, um, where you have one sort of central object that delegates to a number of composed objects to where each composed uh, object has uh, various uh, roles and responsibilities. Now, and I've done that a few times, but what's the problem that emerged? The, the problem with that is that you get the, what, you, what is called the self-schizophrenia problem, that since you have a lot of objects that are separate, but they have some kind of relation, um, there's no way of having a this pointer. There's no way to know which of this is really the object. So when, when you get into persistence, when you get into relationships and so on, it's kind of hard to know which object in this cloud of things, in this composite, should be related to. And by, by removing that from being a design pattern from being, and to being intrinsic in the model, as it is in composite oriented programming, we, we solve that uh, self-schizophrenia. And we can again start talking about objects instead of uh, using a design pattern to, to work around this issue. So for composite-oriented programming, you also have got reference implementation, can we call it? Exactly. Uh, the Key4J. Yeah. Um, it strikes me that Java, Key4J is based on Java, yeah. and Java's language would, it's not fitted for composite-oriented programming to start with. Correct. So you actually have to tweak it, especially the use of mixins for yes. the fragments. that is very true. Wouldn't it be help more helpful to use another language more designed for mm -hmm. Mixin, such, such Ruby? Yeah. Why did why did you choose so Java? Exactly, and this is also a question that is really fundamental and comes up a lot uh, in relation to T4J. Well, why mm -hmm. did we choose uh, Java in the first place? The 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 first and simplest answer is because I know Java. That's a very okay. <laughs> to the point uh, answer. Another reason is that we wanted to um, we wanted to to be domain-driven design helpful. And a very key concept in domain-driven design is to be able to do refactoring. Now, to be able to do refactoring uh, efficiently, you need to have uh, tool support. You need to have IDE support to do it really well. And Java has really, really nice refactoring support. So that was one of the key reasons why we said that uh, basing it on the Java language really gives this to us for free. Uh, so that was also a key point to reuse this uh, uh, refactoring uh, support. So personal experience and Personal experience and, tool, then, support. and tool support was really, really uh, important. And then, of course, also the, the fact that a lot of people know Java. So 
if we can get these ideas into Java while abusing the Java syntax to some degree, uh, it's still a very good step uh, in the correct uh, direc direction. But what we have also said from the beginning is that uh, the ideas are the important. It's composed onto programming that is important, not necessarily the chief implementation. So we see it as a, a step towards maybe uh, a full composed-oriented uh, language further on, maybe in, um, I don't know, 10 years. Mm, even though it something like that. takes some pain for someone learning it. I yeah. know from pe personal experience, yeah. I wrote my first composite yesterday. Yes. Well, the thing is that uh, most of the, the hassle is actually for us writing the framework. Mm -hmm. So when, for those who are, who are using it, it's, uh, it's a lot easier. You don't see a lot of, of the, the problems. When you're writing a mix-in, for example, it's just a Java class implementing an in interface. So that's, that's pretty much business as usual. So the main problem is for us trying to implement uh, mixins in, in the Java environment, but we have done it. So that's, that's sort of fine, even though maybe an, another environment would have helped us as a framework developer. Well, I can see that I like a lot of the ideas that they seem very nice. Um, when you put it to test of reality, are, are these just nice ideas and this implementation? Is it just right. a nice reference implementation or are these actually usable in real life for re writing real applications that people actually use and other people actually maintain? Exactly. So uh, the, the, the background of this project is, of course, I mean, in, in 2000, uh, around 2000, I, I worked on the JBoss uh, EJB server, so I had that background. Uh, and then when I started working on a portal platform called Citation, uh, I wanted to use uh, EJB. And what I found really quickly is that this problem of uh, an object in, in Java not being able to have uh, easily implement different roles was, was really problematic, because I really needed that for my domain model. Like Be having multiple interfaces. Exactly. Having, ha having one object perform multiple roles in different contexts. Mm -hmm. So that was a really fundamental thing I wanted to, to get. So then I realized that the, well, e the EJB model, but it would have been the same with, with plain Java, just didn't work. It couldn't really fulfill my, my expectations. So then uh, in 2002, I implemented a, a framework that is basically based on, on similar ideas as, uh, as Chief Today and use that in, in, the, uh, in the product. And it really made it much, much easier for us to, us to develop the domain model. First of all, it was possible to develop in the first place. So that's a good thing. What we noticed after like three or four years was that these different pieces, the, the fragments that, that we used for the composites, became extremely reusable, precisely because they were doing one thing. They were dealing with one concern and one concern only. So when we were building uh, new domain objects, we could very easily reuse uh, these little pieces. So at that time you were using aspect-oriented programming? I thought it was aspect-oriented programming. Uh, I was calling it aspect-oriented programming. I know now that it wasn't, for the simple <laughs> reason that we didn't have classes. Because, okay. because it was the mm. same thing. We did not have anything in the middle, so to speak, that we added aspects to. We just had an empty box that we added stuff into, uh, mix-ins and concerns. So the evolution of using fragments to build up an object that's actually built on, on uh, five years' experience. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. So this is an extraction. This is an extracted framework, to use uh, Martin Fowler's uh, terminology. Um, so I have some confidence in that the, the basic ideas are correct and that we're now just trying to refine it so that it can work in, in as many domains as possible. Mm -hmm. You mentioned domain-driven design. I know that one of the composite uh, oriented programming ambitions is to be domain driven design enabling. Yes. Uh, I happen to know that you are working on a port of the DDD sample application exactly. into Key4J. How does that work out? Have you made any findings that forces you to reevaluate your uh, design decisions? or? No. Um, there are. In the first version, we're doing a, a straight port. And when you're doing a straight port, you always sort of inherit technological decisions from whatever framework it was uh, using in the original. Uh, what we want to do is to take that direct port and then evolve it to using the, the features in, in T4Day more specifically. So now it will be kind of a 
Java implementation in yeah, Key4J, exactly. but not Key4J idiomatic. Exactly, exactly. It, it won't be using many of the of the the, yeah, the idioms, as you said. But what what we want to do, and what we found immediately when we did the the, the port, was that, uh, for example, there were some uh, architectural constraints that we found by doing the port, because uh, because in in T4J you can explicitly define your architecture, and by doing that we saw that the architecture wasn't. There were some questions that that needed to be solved that we found just by doing the straight port, and that will be. Uh, made more explicit exactly. when, when you reevaluate yes. and rewrite it in a more key for J-ish Exactly, exactly. Manner. So we hope, yes, we hope to resolve some of those uh, architectural issues. And also to, to make uh, more use of the specific features that we have. Excellent. Thank you.